Didi Kinkabwala from the NFL Network joining me right here on the Rich Eisen Show because she knows this locker room very well. How did that whole thing hit you yesterday, Didi? <laughs> it's just absurd at this point, Rich. I mean, Antonio Brown got every single thing that he wanted. He got out of town, he got a new contract, he got more guaranteed money, and he went to the team and the coach that he actually wanted to play for. So why is Juju Smith-Schuster still getting under his skin? Why is he wasting his time getting in these fights? And as you're saying, these little social media spats, if we don't want to call them fights, and as you're saying, he's lost a complete amount of respect. I mean, we've seen Eric Weddle, we've seen Justin Reed, we've seen all these players around the league right now go back to social media and say, wow, don't have a lot of respect for this guy anymore. Or, as Justin Reed said, can't wait to hit this guy. Hmm. How did it land in the, mean, how did it land in the Steelers locker room uh, over the last 24 hours best you can tell I think that there are quite a few players right now that are sitting here and saying, okay, there's some vindication in the sense that maybe more, as one player texted me this morning, he said, maybe now more of the national media will realize it's not the Steelers that are a complete dysfunctional mess, but that there were certain triggers or certain, where does, where is the blame supposedly, where should the blame be centered, I guess is the way that he phrased it. I'm trying to be very careful in how I rephrase. No, sure. <laughs> no, I understand because again, it's just it's amazing that we're relitigating this, and I guess we'll do this for a little bit now. And should something happen uh, between now and the beginning of the season, um, certainly if, as I, I I think it would happen, that the Steelers wind up in New England for the first Sunday night game of the year to see what they look like post Brown, post Bell. But just real, just walk me through again. What the hell did happen in week 17 and and who whose fingerprints are all over it and how much Juju Smith-Schuster or jealousy in his direction played into all of that? This is this is and I talked to you about this earlier, Rich. This is like a spurned lover or this is like a relationship gone bad. Ben and A.B., Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown had this phenomenal, wonderful, amazing relationship for five years. The two of them were tight as can be. A year ago, Ben Roethlisberger said of all the great receivers he's ever had, from Antonio Holmes to Heinz Ward to Mike Wallace and Plexico Burris, the greatest chemistry he has ever had is with Antonio Brown. Now, early this year, going all the way back to OTAs, Antonio Brown, Ben Roethlisberger, not necessarily on the same page, a little bit of a difference in when you show up to work and how you show up to work. The summer comes. It's a little bit odd. Antonio Brown disappears from training camp for a little while. There's definitely some ego at play. The season starts. The two of them just don't seem to be connecting really well. And what had been so magical for them, which even Brown's new coach, John Gruden, has talked about, are sort of the improvised plays, the way that the two of them could make things up together. They weren't really working so well anymore. And Ben Roethlisberger, meanwhile, was unbelievably, to use the same metaphor here, flirtatious with Juju Smith-Schuster. He was so pleased with the way that Juju would run his routes exactly as expected, show up exactly where he needed to show up, was not really making waves, and was never sitting here calling for the ball in any way or having a meltdown on the sideline or taking offense at anything. So the more Ben Roethlisberger talked up Juju Smith-Schuster – the more that ate a little bit at Antonio Brown. Now, fast forward, Antonio Brown engineers a breakup. Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger have broken up, but Antonio Brown is still pissed off, apparently, at the girlfriend who has followed him, which is Juju Smith-Schuster. And I probably shouldn't be using these um, feminine or masculine, whatever, but, I mean, that's what it completely strikes almost everyone here as. I talked to a player yesterday who said the same exact thing, that it's basically like a bad breakup and you can't handle who the who your replacement is i talked to somebody who today who said this just justifies why antonio brown one of the most dynamic players in the nfl ultimately had to be sent out of this locker room and so again the steelers are sitting here and they've essentially said since the end of the season that this may end up being addition by subtraction and antonio brown sure isn't doing anything to lay lie to that idea right now. Aditi, thanks for calling in and give us your two cents in between up-to-the-minute hits on the NFL Network. I appreciate it.
Well, I appreciate it. Anytime, Rich. You got it. We'll chat again soon, I'm sure. That's Aditi Kinkabwala, who covers the Steelers and so many other teams. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.